Hello readers, welcome back to PJL Books and welcome to today's Off the Shelf. Today's topic is Yes But and No And. I have talked about the seven point story arc in the past. I've also gone into detail about the beginning stages of a story, the stasis and the trigger and the ending. Uh, but those are the easy bits, yeah? Uh, what about the middle bit? Now, if you've planned out your novel well in advance, you'll wonder what I'm talking about. Surely opening a story and closing it up are the hardest bits to do, right? Well, technically, yes, but here's a little field work for you. Go grab any fiction novel close at hand. In one hand, pinch the pages that you would class as the beginning of that story, and in the other, pinch what you would class as the ending. Now, unless you've picked up a novel that is especially avant-garde, you're probably only pinching thin slivers of pages at each end, leaving the vast bulk of the novel in the middle untouched. This is the main headache most authors face when it comes to the middle of the novel. The fact that it's so darn big. And what does the middle of the novel do for the story? Well, by and large, it will see your protagonist proceed through a quest of sorts, overcoming trials and tribulations to that final confrontation, the climax and resolution. To some authors, especially in some genres, this is easy. Said quest is explicit and the trials can be laid out pretty clearly like a gauntlet. Crime and mystery novels can pace out the incidents and clues, and fantasy novels may involve a quest which is paced out by the progress of walking across a mythical land or collecting items, a la Lord of the Rings or Horcruxes in the final Harry Potter book. But what if your novel takes place in a singular location? What if your protagonist doesn't face obvious obstacles on their way to confront their main foil? If you approach your project with a view of writing a full novel rather than a novella, the prospect of writing tens of thousands of words to take the protagonist across that bridge from the start of that journey to the end is a daunting task. Because to you, as the author who has planned all this out, the resolution may seem direct and obvious. After all, the protagonist has a problem that he or she needs to solve. Why don't they just go straight to the root of the problem and solve it? Character logic dictates this, and yet the author in you cowers at doing so, knowing your meticulously prepared story will resolve itself as quickly as it started. The low-skilled authors resort to padding, bulking out the middle of the novel with useless exposition, lore, scene setting, all occupied by a protagonist whom the author seems to have made deliberately, frustratingly thick or detail-obsessed so that they pussyfoot their way around that main conflict until the author deems that they have padded the word count out enough. But it needn't be that way, not if we follow the golden rule of questions. I've mentioned this before, but the major driving force that keeps your reader turning those pages are to find the answers to tantalizing questions that you've laid out. What did happen on the Midsummer's Night of 1983? Why is Timothy refusing to talk about the key-shaped tattoo on his neck? Who kicked Hayato off the rooftop of the festival shrine? There should always be at least one question running through the spine of your novel that not only drives your story forward, but also your audience. And yes, it's okay to set up more questions as you go, but you shouldn't try to juggle too many questions without providing answers. It can muddle the clarity of the narrative, as well as switch off your reader who may feel they're in the hands of an author who is trying too hard to keep them in the dark rather than develop the story. I'm looking at you, J.J. Abrams. So what you do is, along with the characters and plot, these questions should also develop. 
So when you answer them mid-quest, answer them with yes, but, or no, and. In other words, the answer itself invites another question. For example, there are many murder mystery novels and TV shows out there where we learn the identity of the serial killer well before the final resolution. But from there spawns questions such as why is he or she doing it? And how will the protagonist deal with this? The first season and novel in the Dexter series by Jeff Lindsay is a prime example of this. These questions can inform the way your protagonist's quests shape themselves by introducing those yes but or no and complications on the way and are a useful tool for integrating obstacles and plot twists for the protagonist to navigate. So it doesn't feel as though the middle of the novel is padded out, but the protagonist is grinding their way through real difficulties that keep threatening to throw them off course. Let's say our protagonist comes to a bolted door, behind which lies the answer to one of those tantalizing questions that will take them one step closer to their goal. But to open the door? Well, only Timothy, the man with the key tattoo on his neck, knows how. But for some reason, Timothy is deathly afraid of this door. Why is that? And how can the protagonist help Timothy to confront his fear and open the door? Thus, more questions ensue and so on. That vast middle passage of a novel can be deeply intimidating, but if approached with an intricate setup of questions and answers, it can not only be easily managed without resorting to padding, but also provide the most scope for an author to really stretch their wings and take that narrative to a new and interesting depth, far more so than mere beginnings or endings allow. And that's it for today's Off The Shelf. Thank you very much for listening, readers. The written version of this is on my website, the link of which is in the description just below. So please check that out, along with all the other links to my blogs and social media if you can. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.